Hey guys, it's Britt. Tonight we're here to talk about the Dad Challenge podcast. It has been a little while since I've talked about the number two menace of YouTube, right behind someone like Deaf Noodles. Uh, Dad Challenge podcast definitely has a very colorful history on his um, YouTube channel in the short time that he's been on social media, kind of doing his quote show, as he likes to call it. And he recently got into it with a fellow YouTuber, and this is something that he does quite often. And I wanted to share my thoughts and just remind everybody why he crumbles anytime he receives any bit of criticism, even though he calls people detractors and likes to ignore them. He is quite very, very much in tune with what others are saying about him. And he's fully well aware of the people who might not agree with him all the time. So if you're interested in hearing my thoughts, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so if you're clicking on this video and you do not know who the Dad Challenge podcast is, I will link a couple of other videos in my description box if you are interested in bringing yourself to, up to speed as to why anyone would want to talk about him. He doesn't really have a super big channel, um, but why would anyone want to talk about him and the things that he's doing? I will link some videos down below. And if you are a fan of the Dad Challenge podcast, I know that a few of his number one fans just it's like sugar in water whenever I talk about him y'all just melt and you know welcome the commentary like he's a commentary channel he talks about people I'm a commentary channel I talk about people other people talk about me it's just the world that commentary is and you know the the thing that I will say is bare minimum at least I can deliver my opinions without dragging, insulting, attacking people for the way that they look or for things that they can't help. And I've damn sure never doxed anyone on my channel or been a misogynist pig. And that's where I will leave things for now as far as why I'm making this video. But I'm sure that I will have a few of them just down there, you know, very upset and I don't know what to tell y'all. So either way, there is another commentary channel here on YouTube. The channel name is Social Spoons, and I have been cordial with her, left her comments of support. She kind of has seen the same, some of the same issues that a lot of us have seen when it comes to Josh and him just being misogynistic, being a bully, harassing people, encouraging people to go real life, boxing people, talking about things that just should not be part of commentary ever, um, shaming people for having worked in, you know, sex work and um, just, you want to talk about parent shaming? Dad Challenge Podcast is the number one parent shamer on YouTube. And, and if we're going to talk about parent shaming versus commentary, his channel is parent shaming. It's living shaming, it's breathing shaming. Um, you know, if you are doing something that he does not like, you better watch out because he will absolutely just become one of your worst nightmares. If you're on his radar and you vlog your kids, forget about it. I, I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you, but um, he's definitely created a very niche audience that sticks with him through thick and thin. They are there for the insults. They are there for the um, just disgusting commentary that he makes. And that's fine, but also don't tell others that they're not allowed to have an opinion when he is in fact an opinion-based channel. That's all that his channel is, is him sharing his opinions. So either way, Social Spoons is a fellow YouTuber. She also has presence on Instagram, and I think she has, she does have presence on TikTok as well. And she has delivered videos about Josh. I'll link her channel down below if y'all want to go watch it. Um, she has had some very interesting insight because she is a Canadian, um, resident and so she knows a lot of kind of the 
laws and kind of how things work when it comes to being a resident of Canada. So that's just a little bit of a difference seat that she has from other commentary channels that are, um, you know, like myself, like APOC, um, being U.S. residents. It's just a little bit of a different viewpoint, which can be interesting. Recently, Josh has decided to make a couple of videos reacting to the Roman Atwood and Shea Carl um, from the channel Ch Shea Tards. He, they did an interview and he decided to react to it. Well, after that interview came out and he reacted to it, another YouTuber by the name of Montana Dana put out this other video called The Real Truth Addressing the Roman Atwood and Shea Carl Interview. And she came forward with her experience with Shea Carl and how he um, allegedly sexually harassed her. And while I'm not going to react to her video because that is her story to tell and, you know, she has a platform to do so, some people have really applauded her for doing this and others have kind of questioned the timing and things like that. And I'm not here to um, share an opinion on that. But the one thing that I will say is Dad Challenge Podcast was over in the comments of her video and things got very sticky. And that's where Social Spoons comes into it. So essentially Dad Challenge Podcast left a comment supporting Montana and someone responded in the comments and said, Dana, please do not go on this guy's channel or interact with him further. He's misogynistic and has similar mannerisms to Shea Carl. The reason that it's rich coming from Josh to leave a comment asking this young woman to come onto his channel to tell her story is first of all, he's trying to profit off of someone else's trauma as he has done in the past. And you should not ever be profiting off of something so traumatic as someone coming forward with this situation and you're trying to get them to tell their story on your platform so you can get the views and you can get the money, but it's them telling their story from their seat, but it's not even being told on their channel. Do you see how little sense that makes? If, if they want a platform to tell their story, that's what they can do. They have their own channel. I don't see what the benefit would be, especially when it comes to Josh having a history in his church of not um, being forthright and not coming forward and telling as as a mandated reporter, he did not tell authorities about an alleged sexual that happened in his church. He knew about it. He was told to stay quiet and he did, even though he was a mandated reporter. I've covered that and many other people did as well. This is why it's a really big deal for him to come from that seat and now in current day, you want someone else to tell their story on your platform so you can collect the monetization, the subscribers and the uh, views off of someone else telling their story. It's just, he talks about ick all the time. This is ick. This is, um, let me monetize someone else's trauma, but have them on my channel to tell their story, but I collect all the monetary, um, income off of it like it's just disgusting and that's just kind of my stance as an outsider looking in maybe montana wants to go on his channel and if she does then by all means but as people in this comment chain were saying she should be fully educated of who it is that she is talking to possibly working with and going on their platform to tell such a deeply personal story that happened to her. So now is where Social Spoons comes in. She says, Dana, 
Thanks for telling your story. Please do not interact with Josh from the Dad Challenge podcast any further. You can watch any of his videos and see the misogynistic remarks he makes towards women all in the name of quote, ending child exploitation. And obviously his content speaks for itself at this point. I'm not going to be a history lesson and go through everything that he's ever said or done. I've talked about it before and I don't want to become super repetitive. But someone else jumped in and of course, you know, his fans and stands are all over the internet just defending and white knighting for him. And she said, you're gross, clout chase much? So having an opinion is clout chasing. Having an opinion on someone's very public content is either harassing, bashing, hating, detracting, or in this case, clout chasing. Where is the logic? So you mean every time DCP has an opinion about a mommy vlogger, he's clout chasing? Because I actually think that that would be more of an accurate statement than someone leaving a comment encouraging one YouTuber to actually look into another YouTuber and get educated on who it is that they could be interacting with. And someone else said, of course, it's up to everyone to form their own opinion, but I would suggest staying away from Josh as well. Thank you for sharing your story, Dana. And some of his other fans are in here just being disgusting. So now is where DCP starts to get very upset with this comment chain and said, Social Spoons, you're Canadian, so I hope you have receipts with that. Otherwise, I'd be super careful. The U.S. border won't protect you from defamation here. So, Josh, educate yourself on what defamation is. Defamation is one thing that I have learned during my time on YouTube is defamation is very hard to prove in a court of law. And obviously, I have a little bit more uh, research having been done for US laws versus Canadian laws. But from what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's even harder to prove in Canada. So to automatically just throw out defamation is something that Katie Joy would do. It's something that Deaf Noodles would do. This is just a, a complete, just an uneducated idiot. And since he likes to call everyone idiots for little to no reason at all, I'm going to actually go off of what he has said and done. And I think that he is an idiot. Do I name call very often? No, I try not to. But this is such an idiotic stance to take to literally try to say that someone having their right to free speech and have an opinion and share that opinion on public sites like YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, um, it is automatically qualifying for defamation. Educate yourself before you go around crumbling at people's opinions and throwing around big words like defamation, harassment, stalking. These are all very common words that I hear thrown around by a lot of YouTubers and usually they are incorrectly labeling opinions as bullies or harassers or people that are trying to defame them. And she responded and said, LOL, nice threat. We know you're all bark. Having an opinion about someone is free speech, my friend. You protested for it after all. And if you guys don't know, I think she's talking about when he went to that like trucker convoy beginning of the year in Canada. That was a whole different situation. And for the other thing, there's a videos on it from you admitting you just dirty deleted it when you got called out. Here's my whole thing with Josh. He is someone who has proven to everybody that he just can't take other people's opinions, which when you're making commentary on YouTube, that's one of the genres that you have to be welcoming of other people's opinions. If you're going to give opinions on public figures, just know that people are gonna have opinions about you and not all of them are going to be in your favor especially when you are creating really toxic, disgusting, quote, commentary, quote, snark about other YouTubers, specifically women. And yes, I know that once in a while he'll talk about men as well, but let's be honest, guys, and, you know, call a spade a spade. He really goes hard at a lot of women, 
and talks about things that are um, just off the table, in, in my opinion. And obviously, that's just my opinion on his videos. But he has a history of threatening people. He has a history of um, just flying off the, you know, um, flying off the handle at other YouTubers when nothing has really been proven or anything like that. A couple of months ago, he tried to accuse me of being involved in a Discord. Not on Discord. I've never been in a Discord. And he took it down very quickly because he knew that he had no proof, no evidence. Um, and if you're going to say so-and-so is in a Discord doing really bad things, then you better be able to prove that because it is disgusting and scary and he knows that his fans and stands will absolutely attack others on his behalf. So to put out something that big of a lie, that big of a claim with not a shred of evidence is reckless and that is not someone who, in my opinion, deserves an ounce of respect within the commentary space on YouTube. I don't look at him as a commentary channel. I don't look at him as a comedy channel. I don't look at him as a snark channel or an opinion-based channel. I just look at him as someone who is extremely misogynistic and has found their small corner of the internet where they feel safe because they have built an audience where some of the audience accepts his insults and disgusting reactions and they believe that it's it's just snark and it's all in the name of saving the children. His content speaks for itself. He is cruel and um, he is a, an internet bully. And that's where I'm going to stand on it. And I think that part of existing online is being able to collect and gather new information and update your opinions once in a while. And that's exactly what happened with him. Initially, I supported him. I could get behind the message. I understood that, you know, not everybody is going to listen to your message if it's not funny and quirky or entertaining or whatever. So I understood some of it, but I quickly started to see more and more and more issues. And my interactions with him behind the scenes were very sketchy, very just gave me a very, very bad vibe and I listened to my gut and I had to stop supporting him. And as part of having integrity goes, I came to y'all and I said, I no longer support him and this is why. And I don't think that he is excused from having commentary delivered on him. After all, if you're a commentary channel, you're not excused from commentary. Now, if you're a commentary channel, do I think that anyone should be bullying or coming with low blows or anything like that? Absolutely, absolutely not. But if it's simple commentary based on your public content, your stuff, like that's just part of having a YouTube channel. And it's really funny because so many commentary channels don't understand the idea that commentary is going to be delivered about you at a certain point in time too. And with all the toxicity and negativity that DCP has put out on this platform in such a short period of time, I don't think that karma is going to look very good for him. And I think that it's going to constantly circle back. Like I said, I'm going to link a couple of videos in my description box if y'all want to look into it a little bit further. It's completely up to you. I'm not encouraging anyone to, but like I always say, um, if you want to fully support someone on YouTube, educate yourself. Like, you know, is, is there content that's out there that they're racist or misogynist or ableist or whatever? Um, it, it's up to you if you want to figure it out for yourself. Um, and then there's others that will just go with the flow and oh it's just snark and we're saving kids guess what you can be anti-family vlogger and not be for this misogynistic bullying type content that is produced by dcp and that's where i'm going to stand on it i don't see myself switching 
anytime soon because I don't see him changing anytime soon and I don't really care, but I'm going to continue to um, periodically share my opinions, even though it sends his fans into a tailspin whenever I do. Um, that's what I'm here for. I'm an opinion-based channel and I am um, going to react to things as I desire and that's what I wanted to do today. So go check out Social Spoons. I'll link her channel down below along with some other videos. But for now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.